Okay, some final assembly thoughts here on the uh, power distribution board. Unfortunately, they sent me a bad one. It was only putting out 10.5 volts. So I had to direct um, wire up my camera system so I can only run it on a 3S. At this point, I'll have to unsolder everything and change that board out at some point. Anyway, um, I went ahead and did some skids. Uh, these are for a like a 500 series uh, helicopter, and they fit in there pretty good and ran a screw up the front there. So, and then uh, I went ahead and added some LEDs, and this beeper is kind of loud, just to warn you. And got some red and a green and some yellow. White. It's supposed to be white in the back on av lights, but I like yellow. And then the beeper. And then there's a couple different modes on the lights with this uh, power distribution board. There, there's solid on. Slow flash. And faster flash and then off. <clears throat> and you have to flip that switch pretty quick. And uh, so, I think that's about it. So we'll jump onto the computer and I'll show you how to dial in this tail uh, to finish zeroing it out as far as level and trimming it basically and then we'll go for a test flight I think it's pretty much it it's pretty much ready to go kind of give you an idea which way your tail should be going so, <clears throat> and then when you push on your sticks it's always the opposite way your stick movement is Got that radio in there So anyway, we'll go in and uh, adjust the servo trim, and like I said, that's pretty much it. Be ready for a test flight. Make sure and check your fail safe on whatever receiver you're using, or radio system. Make sure that works before you uh, even put your props on. So make sure you go ahead and run up your throttle, get the motor spinning, and then shut your radio off, and make sure that the motors die. If they keep spinning, you need to go change something. Like I said, I always set them to drop, so my motor should just stop and it will drop. I don't want it floating around in the air for a while. Or if it did crash, then your motors are spinning and binding up or who knows what. So I just like them to shut off. But everybody their own on that will see on the computer. Okay, go ahead and get into your clean flight. And go to your uh, PID tuning. And these are the stock setup, basically. Um, I have changed the yaw, which I'll change it some more. If you want more rate, this is where you'll want to change it. But anyway, on the tail adjustment, go to your yaw and, and write this setting down and this setting down. And then zero them and save it. Disconnect. Go take it out for a test flight, and it's going to try and go sideways on you and you want to uh, trim that um, yaw until it will quit drifting basically you'll have to do it on a real still day and then once it quits drifting go ahead and shut it down bring it back into your clean flight go over to your uh, receiver tab and you should be able to see um, your trim adjustment how much and then take that amount on your yaw and go back into your PID tuning and or actually no you want to go into your servo sorry go into your servo and take that calculation that amount and adjust it on here either add it or subtract it to 
this one here on servo 5. And that should make your servo level. And then go ahead and go back into your PID tuning and re-add these two here. And hit save and you should be good to go. And then um, the way I was taught on PID tuning, which there is this G tune in modes, so this may do it all for you. I have not tried this yet. Where is that at? Uh, at least I thought it was on here. I guess not. I must have been on a different model. <clears throat> anyway, some of them have G-Tune, which I think does it for you. Anyway, um, you write down your settings, and you do one at a time. Do your roll, then do your pitch, and then do your yaw. But do them one at a time, so it's just not totally out of control. But you write down this one and this one, and zero them. And then you take this one as high as you can until it starts shaking and then you just back it off and that's the number you want that one and then it's usually just a little bit below kind of like it is here you know a little bit less as you go along and then you kind of do that with each one until you get the feeling that you want for it and then there's also a way to set up a <clears throat> a knob to uh, to do that I'll have to do a separate video on that and there's tons of videos out there on, on tuning. And so go check out some other videos on that too because everybody's a little different on it. I don't think there's one golden tuning rule. And it's all on how you like to fly and your equipment and so on. So anyway, give that a try. And that should at least get you in the air. And let's see, let's just kind of roll through... Um, everything here make sure and this is kind of preference when you arm it basically this is do you want the blade spinning as soon as it arms or not and then this is the speed they're going to spin at which this is usually set up a little bit i usually bring it down <clears throat> i have it um spinning now because um oh the uh other flight mode, what's it called? The new one here. Air mode. I wanted to try that out, and I think you have to have that off. Let's see. So, and I have most of this shut off because with the CC3D, if you want telemetry and so on, you have to do some more modifications to make that work. You have to put in like some kind of inverter to bring the voltage down on your battery voltage. <clears throat> and then, like I said, I like setting it to drop so it kills the blades. And we've been in there and receiver, make sure all that's working the right way. And your mode switches. Um, you go in here because it'll be empty, and you just click on add it, and then what channel you want it on, what auxiliary channel. And then you just move these to what location you want it to be activated. The green is the activation. And then if you click save, once you do that, you can see your switch moving and make sure that everything's working correctly with your transmitter hooked up so anyway I don't want that in there that's how you set them up and we've been through the servo and then on the motors uh, make sure your blades are off and you click this button here and then you'll take this slider and you'll slide it all the way to the top You'll connect your battery, and the speed controllers will chime. And once they're done, bring it down to the bottom, and they'll run through another set of chimes. 
and then disconnect your battery unclick this <clears throat> and you're done on that part that's just so your speed controllers are all starting up at the same time together so anyway that's pretty much it on this and you have on this one you have three profiles so you can set up some different PID settings if you want and um, you'll have to search Google go in and look for um, multi Wii stick direction profile change or something like that and you'll find it they'll have a little sheet and you can move the your sticks in a certain direction and switch between these profiles <clears throat> if they have that working anyway if not go in here and manually change it and there is some good uh, apps on uh, <clears throat> Android I have some on my tablet that, that are hooking up to this and working for PID tuning so you can take your tablet and probably your phone and uh, go out and do some PID tuning and I have to run in and out or pack the laptop outside so anyway that's it for this video we will have a flight video once it warms up and I have another build but the uh, uh, video is all blurry or all the close-ups are so I don't know if I'm gonna post it or not but I did a 130 build so we'll have some at least flight footage of that this uh, summer too so make sure and hit that subscribe button and watch for my next video car crash out